Let's use Visual Studio C Sharp to learn how to sort an array of integer values. And you can sort other, other data types also. But let's sort that array in descending and ascending order in a multiple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project. File, new project, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to do a Visual uh, C Sharp console application. And I'll call this sort sort my arrays, call it whatever you want, and then click on OK. And we'll come into this program. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to just go create a brand new array. And I'll make it an array of integer. I'll call it AI age. And I'm going to make it five elements long and go ahead and initialize each of those elements right there on that line. Now, I've done that because I know the values. If I didn't know the values, I could have always asked the user, enter your values. Next thing I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and print off all the elements of that array. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code I've written before. And I've got a console.write line that says original list. And this will print off the contents of the array as it was first declared. So I just use a for each to do this. You could have done it with a for loop. But the for each works with collections, and an array is a collection. And so it says, for each element of the collection, AI age, grab the first element, store it to that variable. Now, make sure that the variable data type matches the data type of the array. So you say, grab the first element, store it to that variable, and then I print it out. Notice that you don't have to specify a counter or the length of the array or anything like that. It's just smart enough to do it for you because that's the way the for each works. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a sort method that's already out there. So here's the code I just pasted in. I'm going to uh, display a blank line, and I could have just done that right there. I'm going to print off, use the array.sort. Array is a class of source code that's already been written for you in C Sharp. Somebody said, you know what, I'm tired of rewriting this code over and over to sort arrays. And so I'm just going to make a class out of it and let other people use it. And the way you do it is you say array dot. So you specify the class name, which is array dot, and then the method name. Remember, methods do work. And in this case, this method, which somebody else wrote for us, does work. And the work that it does is it sorts elements in an entire array. And it's going to sort it in ascending order. And all you have to do is tell it which array you want to sort. So you say array.sort, parentheses, whatever array you want to sort, and then it will sort it in ascending order. And then I'm going to go ahead and print off the contents of that array after it sorts. And I'm just going to copy that same code that I used earlier. So let's see what happens if I run this. If I run it, it should first print off the array, well, actually, I need to add my pause screen. So let me come down here and do my console dot read line so that we can pause the screen. Now let's run it and see what happens. We'll print off the array in the original order. That's the order that it was declared in. And then we said sort it, and then it prints off the contents. So it actually modifies the contents of the array in an ascending order. Now that's a lot easier than using the bubble sort and writing all of it. You just simply say, let's use code that somebody else wrote. Well, what if I want it in descending order rather than ascending order? Well, somebody already thought of that. I'm going to paste in this code. And it says, print off a blank line and print off, let's do the reverse. So you say array class dot reverse, and then you pass it the array that you want to reverse order. So let's run it one more time. Now we should see the original order the ascending order, and then we want the descending order. Well, the descending order, something happened on that. It did sort it, but what didn't I do? I still didn't print off the contents of that array. So let's come back down to here, and now let's print the contents off after it was reverse sorted. Try it one more time. Original order, ascending order, descending order. You see how easy that is so far. So now you've seen you can use array, the class array, dot sort method, and then you pass it or send it the array you want to sort. 
and that will sort it in ascending order. Now we're working with ints. You could do the same thing with strings and it would sort it in alphabetical order from ascending lowercase a to uppercase uh, z and vice versa, lowercase or uppercase either way. Um, so that will sort it alphabetically. In this case we're working with ints. We can sort it. We use reverse to do a descending sort. Once again, this is the array class dot reverse. We pass it whatever array we want to change and it will actually modify the contents of that array. Now another thing we can use is called the order by method. Now in order for this to work, you have to create a brand new array that's going to be sort of like a temporary holding array. And I'll declare it down here just so you can see it. I'd rather put it up top with all my other arrays. AI new array, new int, and I'm going to make that the same size of the AI age array. And I can do that by saying array.length. But currently, there's nothing in it. It's the same length of AI age, but there's nothing in it. I could then say AI new array is equal to, and then I could actually use the array object that I've already made called AI age bot. And since it's an object, it also has methods. And one of the methods is called order by. Now, the reason I probably don't use this as much is because this uses something called lambda expressions. And they're a little bit more of an advanced topic, but what I'll just show you is that what we do is we say the word, whatever word you want, I value equal greater than I value. Now, do you remember the uh, for each statement? This for each statement says it works with collections, and it will go grab each element out of the array one at a time and store it to that variable and then print it off. What this is saying is I want to sort this array in ascending order. So go grab each element one at a time. And we're also going to use that same value for doing our sorting. So this says what are you grabbing? And this says how are we going to, to sort it? So one other thing you have to do to make this work though is you have to say I need to return this when I'm all done as an array, parentheses, parentheses. So this will go use the array, sort it, grab each element, and then use those elements to sort it, and then return the final result as an array, and then we store it back to AI new array. So if I wanted to print those out, I could come over to here and I'll just paste in this code. We're going to print out, use the order by. There's our sort. And then we just print each element. And go ahead and get rid of this line for a second. Let's run it one more time and see what happens. There's the original list, the array.sort in ascending order, the array.reverse in descending order, and then the array.order by in ascending order. Now, when you look at this code, you might think to yourself, well, that is sort of weird, and it doesn't make very much sense compared to the uh, array.sort. And that's why you'll see a lot of people just use that array.sort. I'm just going to add that backslash in to clean up the output. So the order by is another way to sort, but you have to provide what we call a lambda expression, which can be confusing. And the last way you can do it is instead of doing the order by, you can use the order by descending. And it's the same concept where you had to create a brand new array. We have the array already made out there. Tell it what do we want to pull back, how do we want to sort it, turn the result into an array. There's a semicolon at the end of that. And then we store it back to that element and we print off the data. Let's go ahead and run that, make sure it works. So here is the original list, array.sort, array.reverse, order by, and order by descending. You'll just have to choose which sort method you like best. Now if I was going to, if I had multiple arrays and I wanted to try to keep them synced, then you're going to have to use maybe your own code, your own for loop within a for loop to sort that. Anyway, those are four different ways to sort arrays.